So we have to have clues. Every one of these is a secret. If you are 35 and you have little hair on the top of your head, think about why you might be aging. Could be genetics, could be your diet, could be external forces like air pollution. If you have yellow deposits around your eye, you might have a cholesterol of 380, you better get checked. But the most interesting one is this one. And thank you to Steven Spielberg, and I hope he's healthy and well, but not all people with lots of money are healthy and well. He has a very deep crease in both his earlobes that he did not have when he was 20 or 30. There's pictures of him. And this is called a diagonal earlobe crease. Sorry for the loud fire truck going down my office street outside. That is called a DELC. And a internal medicine specialist in New York City, Dr. Frank, in the 1970s, was a very bright observer who noticed, I'm talking to a patient who's had a heart attack, and they have a crease in the earlobe. And the next patient would be there for thyroid disease, and they didn't have a crease in the earlobe. He actually counted the numbers, published the data in a small article in the New England Journal of Medicine, generally regarded to be a high level and reliable journal. And it is called a DELC. And subsequent studies have shown it's about 70% accurate. Now, if you're looking at a mirror right now and you see a crease in your earlobe, don't freak out. It's 70% accurate for clogged heart arteries. We know that because they took people that had heart CT scans, we're gonna look at it in a minute, and they noticed who had earlobe creases and who didn't. And these have been published about 10 studies from all over the world. But a stress test is about 70% accurate and looking at your earlobes is about 70% accurate. So go to your doctor and say, I have a diagonal earlobe crease, it's called Frank sign. And I want you to do some of the stuff that the top secret preventive cardiologist talked about, which we're coming to. Now, this is an important message. ED, ED, warning, warning. Stands for erectile dysfunction. Is the flagpole up? Is the flagpole no longer able to go up? Sometimes referred to as the canary in the coal mine. You can go look up pictures. They're very, very uh, graphic pictures of miners going into a coal mine with a bird in the cage because if the carbon monoxide level, which is odorless and tasteless, went up, the bird would get sick before the people would get sick and they would quickly leave the mine and have an early warning detection. I am not referring to the male anatomy as a bird, yet it works the same. A man in his early 40s, mid 40s, late 40s, early 50s, starting to have trouble and that's about 50% of men at age 50 with erectile function should get checked so thoroughly because it can be an early warning clue to advanced heart disease and catch this disease early. It's not like, oh my God, you might have heart disease. It's like 30, 40% of guys at age 50 have heart disease and 50% have their erectile dysfunction. Of course, there are other causes like prior injury, psychological factors, hormonal endocrine factors, but never, never just take the blue pill from the primary care doc and say, wow, that's an effective pill. They are effective pills, but that's not root cause. You didn't turn the sink off. You're gonna be mopping the floor for a while till there's really a tragedy. Do not ignore erectile dysfunction. This data I just presented to you about erectile dysfunction goes back 20 years in the medical literature. Every day, today in medical offices in the United States, Canada, Mexico, Europe, men will get erectile dysfunction drugs with no discussion about their underlying heart health. It has to be assessed. So there are tools that can be used. You see a CT scanner there in the upper left. We'll talk about that. You see a woman with a probe on her neck. That's a ultrasound probe and a picture below it. And there's a cartoon there about lab testing, identifying people at risk of heart attack and stroke. So let's go into that. And a European vascular specialist who was editor of a prominent journal said, just like Dr. Sidingham, the best test to predict your risk of atherosclerosis is to demonstrate atherosclerosis. I mean, your cholesterol might predict atherosclerosis, your blood sugar might predict it. But if you actually have diseased arteries, it's not predicting it, it's finding it. We don't you know, ask you how much fiber is in your diet and tell you you might have polyps and colon cancer. We suggest a colonoscopy. 
We don't tell a woman you might have a lump. We do exams and mammography, but we don't do that for blood vessels routinely. We are missing the boat. Warp speed, we need to start doing this. You need to start doing this. It will change many people's lives and will save lives. So if you look there in the upper left, screening for atherosclerosis, there's all kinds of blood tests. We'll talk about that in a minute, but there are actually imaging studies. It talks about carotid ultrasounds, aortic ultrasounds, calcium scores. And that is to say, we're gonna go directly to the blood vessels and see as a screening test, just like a colonoscopy and just like a mammography. Don't only apply this after a heart attack. We want to, at a reasonable age, age 45 to 50, and some people earlier, we want to know if you're clogged up and we need to bring out the fire trucks and the full alarm like you just heard in the background. Why is this the case? Look at the artery that has no white dots. That is an artery that's barely abnormal. If it is not blocked, there's no calcium. If you did a heart CT scan, you'd find nothing, the routine screening one. If you did a stress test, you'd have normal results. Shouldn't have any symptoms because the artery is not clogged. But if you go to the moderate one, it hasn't really narrowed the artery much. So a stress test is gonna be normal. A review of symptoms of heart disease like angina chest pressure is gonna be negative. But the CT scan can pick up the calcium at an early stage, let alone the advanced or late stages. A stress test won't be abnormal. Let me take that back, try it again. A stress test won't be normal and symptoms will start to develop only, only, only in the latest stages of heart disease. It makes no sense. We're not gonna evaluate your colon till you have a cancer so big that it's caused you bowel obstruction. That would be the equivalent. That is such an insane suggestion, but we do it every day in heart disease. We, we ask about chest pain in the office, that's a good plan. Maybe we order an executive physical, that's not a good plan, but it's still done a lot. But we don't look for these early findings of calcified heart arteries, which are so available, simple, and inexpensive. So in 2007, a society was formed, the SHAPE Society, Society of Heart Attack Prevention and Eradication. I've been a member of that society since 2007. They're still in existence. But for a while, they were the only ones talking the language I'm talking. Look at the aqua blue box. Get an atherosclerosis test. Isn't that what Dr. Schneider said in Europe? Isn't that really what Dr. Seidingham said in England 400 years ago? You're an apparently healthy man, 45 and up. You're an apparently healthy woman, 55 and up. And you got something, maybe you smoked in college, maybe your blood pressure is borderline, maybe your LDL cholesterol is 118, maybe your father had bypass at age 64, or maybe your waistline is accelerated or you have lots of stress. Let's look at the arteries. And it says to the right, do a coronary artery calcium CT scan or do a carotid ultrasound. And if you follow the logic, they suggested 14 years ago, if these tests of atherosclerosis are clean, you're low risk, you're not gonna get whipped on prescription medicines, you've got lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle to continue and you want to continue it, but you're a winner at that point. And way to the right, the very high risk, of course. If you're a apparently healthy person like Jim Fix or the CEO of BJ's Wholesale Club, we find you are diseased inside. We're bringing out the ambulances. We're bringing out the fire trucks. We're going to do everything we can from lifestyle to pharmacology to occasionally natural supplements, whatever it takes. So this little ditty could save lives. <clears throat> Three examples of asymptomatic people who got a prescription from their uh, local doctor or perhaps they're in a state like Texas where you don't need a prescription. If anybody can see, I have pre-printed prescription pads for CT calcium scoring because I ask so many patients to get this done. Uh, when this technology came to the state of Michigan where I am, it was 1995. It happened to be my brother, a radiologist, and the test was $1,200 cash, but it worked back then. Now this test in my community is $75 many hospitals, $50, sometimes 150 at 
Case Western University in Cleveland, it's generally free. They give them out for free. And if you're panel A, you have where the yellow arrow is pointing your left main, left anterior descending artery, left circumflex artery of your heart. That's your heart on a CT scan. No needle, no injection, no iodine dye, no allergic potential, $50, $75. Your calcium score is zero. You just won the lottery of heart disease life. And Dr. Sidingham would say you are as old as your arteries. You're very young. If you're the panel B, you've got flex of calcium. That's plaque. That's the disease. It's starting. You're 10, 15, 12, eight years away from being in an emergency room with a real serious problem. But we can stop the process. And there are people like panel C. <clears throat> They're playing tennis, scuba diving. They're planning a trip to Machu Picchu and climb the mountain. And they are so full of plaque that when they bend over, you probably can hear it crunching. But doesn't mean they're going to feel angina pain. Doesn't mean their electrocardiogram is going to be abnormal. They need a stress test. They may need a angiogram. They may need bypass or stents. But they certainly need, at a minimum, aspirin, certain medications, and lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. Can we reverse this? We'll talk about that, perhaps. If you go ahead and get a calcium score and you get this report, left main zero, left anterior descending artery zero, left circumflex zero, right coronary artery zero, total calcium score zero, you have won the lottery of life at that point in time. It's about a 99% certainty the next decade is going to go well for you. I'm glad to show you that because that was my calcium CT scan about nine months ago at age 61. Now at age 62, I've actually done an even more advanced CT scan in a research study, and it verified I have neither hard calcified nor soft non-calcified plaque, but that's for another lecture because that's not really a screening test. There's a poor woman in Australia that was reported the news this morning that died of a CT scan where they inject the iodine because she has such a severe allergic reaction. So I'm very respectful of the power of iodine to be harmful or healing, but these scans involve no iodine. So there is no allergic risk and it's on the uh, exposure to radiation equivalent to a mammogram. It's very low. It's not zero, but it's very low. Now, I'm glad to tell you that in 2007, the SHAPE Society started stressing the calcium score, but AHA stands for American Heart Association. Dr. Williams was president in 2015 of the American College of Cardiology, a huge organization. The other huge organization is the American Heart Association. And if you look where the red circle is, for the first time in 2019, which is um, 12 years after the SHAPE Society, CAC stands for Coronary Artery Calcium CT Scan. There's many individuals that would benefit from a CT scan. It's becoming mainstream, way too late, way too slow, but it's finally becoming mainstream. I mentioned there's an alternative. Some of you and some practitioners just won't order a CT scan on their patients. I respect that, although I think it's still worth the one study. You do want to be respectful of radiation burden during your life. But if you fly in an airplane from New York to Los Angeles, you're getting lots of radiation too. So there's a carotid test different than just the standard one you might get at a health fair where there are ultrasound images made on your neck, but there's digital software, digital measurements, artificial intelligence, a much, much more advanced approach. The problem is the CT scan is widely available. I offer these carotid studies in my office and they're extremely helpful. I in fact have many people that have a calcium score of zero and they still have plaque in their carotids. It's predominantly soft plaque, which isn't necessarily benign. And I still have to work with them on their risk factors. Uh, this is an example of a right and left carotid artery imaged in my office. It says a 56-year-old uh, uh, man. On the upper part, each of the carotids has a little tiny, actually, they're not so tiny. They're less than 20% blocked. The one on the right says 1.8 millimeters. The one on the left, that's a pretty big plaque, 3.6 millimeters. Heterogeneous means it's hard and soft plaque. It's a combination. And if you look below, it says this 56-year-old man has an arterial age of a 60-year-old. 
we want to get that down to our general age of a 40 year old and we're going to do everything we can to make that happen now there are people that have no plaque that's a nice result and if you look at the bottom it says 60 year old male with arteries age 51 that's a great result dr Sidingham would be happy again i'm not bragging but that happens to be my name in the upper corner and a plant-based diet does a lot to help you keep those arteries clean. I've repeated it subsequently and it has remained uh, in that range. So it feels good to know the score because you're not guessing. Heart score is zero. Which of these guys has a heart score of zero? Put two women there, it doesn't matter. Who's got a heart score of zero? Who's got a calcium score of 487? It's so critical, test not guess, please. Action step, check your colon, check your breast, check your heart. This should be the list at a reasonable age. We just moved colonoscopy to age 45. Mammography is also age 45. And I would argue that calcium scoring for many people at age 45 and some people earlier would be of great value. And I would add to it the carotid intimal medial thickness ultrasound, CIMT. Big secret, but it's not a big secret now for everybody listening. 